This is going to be a quick study on how to get your name in the book of life and feel good about it. Many people have their name in the book of life, but they don't feel good about it because they don't understand, they don't really understand how it stays in there, and they don't understand really the things that happened when they got their name there. And then you have people whose name isn't in the book of life, but they think that it is. But the first thing is, if you want to have your name in the book of life and feel good about it, then never rely on a good life to get your name in the book of life. Romans 4, 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So what's counted for righteousness? Your faith. That is your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross. That's what will get your name in the book of life. That's what makes you righteous. It's to him that worketh not. Your works don't have anything to do with your name getting in the book of life. Galatians 2.16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So why is your name in the book of life? If you have believed the gospel, then your name is there. Your name is in the book. You're not justified by the works of the law. The, uh, breaking the law in any form is not going to take your name out. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So you're saved by grace. Your, your name is in the book of life because of God's grace. God is giving you something that you don't deserve. That's what grace is. And none of this is of yourselves. You didn't do anything to earn getting in that book. It's the gift of God. Now there is works that you need to do after you're saved. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So this is Paul saying you're saved by grace through faith without works, but you still need to do works, not to get in the book of life, not to stay in the book of life, but because you love the Lord, because you appreciate what he's done for you. Titus 3, 5 <clears throat> Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his, to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So why are you in the book of life? If you're in the book of life today, why are you in it? Because of God's mercy. God's keeping you from something you do deserve. If your name's in the book of life, then you're going to heaven and you're not going to hell. God's keeping you from hell. That's God's mercy. And it, you didn't get that mercy by works. You got it because you believed the gospel. <clears throat> Galatians three twenty four and 25. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. A lot of people worry that they are going to lose their salvation because... They've committed a certain sin. Uh, they read the Bible and they see where it talks about a certain sin where they're like, I've done that. Am I going to go to hell? But it clearly says here, the law is our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. You're not, you're not still under the law. I mean, you want to do the things that the Bible says. You want to abstain from the things that the Bible says not to do and you want to do the things the Bible says to do. But the verse clearly says that we are justified by faith and we're no longer under a schoolmaster. The law has no power over you. The breaking of the law is not going to put you in hell if you're saved. 
1 John 2, 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. You're so worried about a sin you've committed. You think you've committed some certain sin that got your name out of the book of life. But this verse clearly said that Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He appeased the wrath of God. He became our substitute. When you believe the gospel, he became your substitute. And he appeased the wrath of God on, on your behalf for all the sins you've committed. And not for yours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he died for past, present, and future sin of every person. It was just up to you to accept the payment. And since Jesus is your propitiation, your name's in the book of life. And then 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 says, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Do you know why? That you're not a fornicator or an idolater or an adulterer anymore? It's because when you get saved, God doesn't see you as that anymore. He sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You may have fornicated with somebody after you were saved, but God doesn't see that. He sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ on your record. You don't want to take it too far the other way and say that, well, I can just go commit all these sins because I'm saved by grace through faith. You don't want to say that because you're still going to be, you're going to be judged for those things in the flesh. And that's going to give you a loss of rewards. You're not going to have inheritance in the kingdom in the sense of you're not going to rule over cities like you would if you live for the Lord. But still, don't doubt your salvation. If you've messed up and done a certain sin, this doesn't mean you should doubt your salvation and wonder, is my name really in the book of life? The thing is, never rely on a good life to get your name in the book of life. And never rely on a good life to keep it in the book of life. 1 Peter 1, 4 and 5 says, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. You got something reserved in heaven for you when you get saved. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. I'm not keeping myself saved. I'm not keeping my name in the book of life. It's not like that, you know, every time I sin, one of the letters of my name is getting erased. It's not like that. I'm kept by the power of God. Only God can keep me saved. Only God can keep my name in the book of life. 2 Timothy 2.13 If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Somebody says, well, what if I stop believing? I have to believe a certain amount after salvation to keep my name in the book. But they just, this just said, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot, not, cannot deny himself. If there was a time when you truly believed the gospel, relied on Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection, his bloody death, to be your payment for sin, then nobody can take your salvation away. It doesn't matter if you don't have enough as much faith as you did when you got saved. He can't deny himself because you're part of him. <clears throat> Jude 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. He's able to keep you from falling. He's able to present you faultless. Romans 5.18. Therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men to and the justification of life. You have the righteousness of Jesus Christ as a free gift. And that's how you're kept. Because you're not kept saved by your righteousness. You're kept saved by the Lord's righteousness. 
Next, note who made it possible to get your name in the book of life. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus Christ is the one that made it possible to get your name there. And he became sin for you. He was made sin, even though he knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 1 Peter 2.22 says, Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So it said, He knew no sin. He did no sin, and he was yet without sin. The person, the only man, the God-man, is the only one who ever lived that never sinned. And by him doing that and dying on the cross for your sins in your place, that's who made it possible to get your name there. You didn't make it possible. Titus 1-2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. God cannot lie. He never sinned. And that's the one that put you in the book of life, made it possible for your name to be in the book of life. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, plainly shows us the gospel. It plainly shows us the event that made it possible for you to get in the book. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the gospel is that Jesus Christ died. And you know, he died by shedding his blood. He died for our sins. He was buried and resurrected. That's what made it possible for you to be saved, to have your name in the book of life. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus Christ gave himself for you and me so that we could have our name in the book of life. Revelation 1, 5, From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. That's why your name's in the book of life. Because you believed the gospel and you that blood of Jesus Christ has made it possible for you to get your name in the book and keep it there. Now next, nobody can take it out. If your name's in the book of life, then the devil can't take it out. Nobody can. Revelation 3, 5, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. If you've believed the gospel, then you've overcome. You're an overcomer. John 28 and 29, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. No man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And for you today, you take this a step further because you're not just in the Father's hand. You're not just in Jesus's, Jesus Christ's hand. You actually make up His hand. You're part of the body of Christ if he were going to take you out of the book of life, he would have to, have to amputate part of his body. Romans eight thirty eight and 39, Paul says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So Paul names off all these things, things that people are afraid of, death. People are afraid of death. They're afraid to die because it's, you know, they're going into the unknown, but that can't take away your salvation. People are afraid of life. They think, I can't live as to this certain 
standard of holiness and keep myself saved throughout my life. But your life can't take away your salvation. Angels, people are afraid of spirits. They can't take away your salvation. Things present or things to come. What's going on right now can't take away your salvation. Nothing in the future can. And he says, nor any other creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God. So once you get the, in, in the love of God that's in Christ, you can't get your name erased out of the book of life. Nobody can rip that page out that your name's on. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. And whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance into the redemption of the purchased possession and to the praise of his glory. So God sealed you with the Holy Spirit. The devil can't break that seal. He's not able to break the seal that they put on him when he gets put in the bottomless pit. So he can't break the seal that's put on you at salvation. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. That's the rapture. You're sealed until you leave this world. And, and then you're going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. How to get your name in the book of life? Put your faith in Jesus Christ and his bloody death, burial, and resurrection on the cross. To be your payment for sin. And then God keeps you saved. All the good works that you do after salvation. You're doing because you love God. Because you have a desire to work for Him. Because you love Him. And that should be the only reasons why. You should not be doing good works. Because you want to keep your name in the book of life. You should not be doing good works. Because you want your name in the book of life. Uh... Your works have nothing to do with it. Your name is there because you believe the gospel. But if your name's not in the book of life, I hope you'll come to Jesus Christ today and believe on him so that you can have your name in the book of life. You'll never have to worry about going to hell again. And if you're saved but you're not living right, just confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And you just start trying to do better. Not to make sure your name's in the book. Because if you're, if you're saved, your name's already in the book. But you want to do better because he wants you to maintain good works. Even though you're saved by grace through faith. Don't ever let anyone tell you that God doesn't care how you're living. Because he does. 